So a little bit about St. John. It's surrounded by water. On one side, we've got the Atlantic Ocean with the Bay of Fundy, which has the highest tides in the world. And in fact, it's the Bay of Fundy that I actually like to go surfing in. And then you've got the reversing falls where the whole St. John River watershed empties out into the Bay of Fundy. And this is a place where a lot of my friends love to go kayaking in the massive rapids and whirlpools and waves. And then we've got these two beautiful rivers that meet at the upper side of the Reversing Falls Gorge. One is called the Willowstook, which also means the beautiful river. Canadian yachting call it the Rhine of North America. And then you've got the Kennebecasis River, which is one of the most epic places to take those colorful pictures of the fall foliage on our steep banks. It's also an incredible place to go paddling. For all these reasons, the Hemmings family loves the water. We love to swim, we love to sail, we love to jump, we love to paddle, we love to surf in the water that surrounds our community. So because of our love for water, a number of years ago we had an opportunity to purchase a little waterfront cottage on the outskirts of St. John in the opposite direction of where we live right now. And the cottage was on this little lane called Memory Lane and it was so aptly named because so many memories were made there. We spent four glorious summers at our cottage, living on the beach, playing in the water. You see, something magical happens when you get to drive home after work around six o'clock and the sun doesn't set till nine, and you can use those four precious hours as time with family connected to nature. And that is the lifestyle that we would love to have year round, not just in the summer. So we discussed it. What would it look like if we sold our house and then moved full time into our cottage? It sounded like a great idea to have that waterfront access year round, but there's a few challenges with our cottage. Number one, it's quite small for our growing family. And number two, it was a really, really steep lane to get down there, so it's almost impossible to plow in the winter time. And number three, it was a combined two hours of driving every single day to get our kids from memory lane to their schools and us to work and back. And these three challenges really were weighing on us. You see, we almost had perfection where we're living at memory lane, but something just wasn't right. Yeah, Greg, you're beating up on yourself. Jake. So Greg, you're making a common mistake that people with cottages make, unfortunately, and it's that you beat up on yourself for not using it enough. And the reality is there's two types of people that own cottages. There's people who are gonna use it every weekend uh, on their two or three weeks off. There's those people. And then there's people like you, and this includes a lot of cottage owners. They're people who are really busy, they have their own businesses, and their lives are a little bit more messy than the typical nine to five. And for those people, cottages can be really challenging. The other thing with cottages is that you've got two roofs, two driveways, two insurance bills, and it's just a lot more logistics. For people like you, I've always thought that a waterfront house makes a lot more sense. One place where it all fits in. A waterfront house, you say? So the potential solution would be to sell our precious cottage, perhaps sometime down the road sell our home, and eventually find a property that's closer to uptown so we don't have to drive so much, and maybe, just maybe, close to the water so we can live that water cottage life year round. So we decided to sell our cottage. If you're thinking of buying a um, cottage, do not buy this one. I do not want to sell my cottage. So tune into the next episode where you can see us attempting with clever and creative ways to start marketing the sale of this beautiful waterfront property.